Oh my god, I know. Thin privilege, it's so not real. I know that you can't go into stores and find clothes in your size. I know you can't just go to Target and grab a medium hoodie off the rack. I know that you can't just go to In-N-Out and get large fries and a burger without anyone judging you. People actually thank you for normalizing getting fast food and normalizing and helping them with their eating disorders. It's just so hard and I know that like guys totally don't prefer like moderately thin women that are usually Eurocentric and white it's just so hard like it's so not real and it doesn't exist and just fat people have it so easy and it's so normalized to be thick I get your struggle I really do. Thank you. I appreciate that. So she gave a few examples of what thin privilege is. She said buying clothes off the rack is thin privilege. It isn't. She then said that some stores not having plus size clothes is thin privilege. But there are also a lot of stores that are plus size only, like Torrid. So are thin people oppressed in those stores? Then she said that eating burgers without judgment is thin privilege. Eating food without judgment isn't a privilege. She also said that being thanked for helping people with their EDs is a privilege. That isn't a privilege. And it's also not exclusive to thin people. I've seen a lot of fat people getting praised for helping other people recover from their ED. So I think you're just not looking in the right places. And lastly, she said that men preferring thin women is thin privilege. That's not a privilege because having someone attracted to you physically or romantically, isn't a right. And then she also mentioned that men prefer women that are white and Eurocentric. First of all, what does that have to do with thin privilege? And second, are you not white and Eurocentric? I don't understand why the white and Eurocentric thing was mentioned. But overall, none of these are privileges. And if we are going to consider them privileges, let's also point out all of the fat privileges that exist like most clothing stores selling plus size clothing at the same price as smaller sizes. Plus size clothing is often sold at the same price as normal size clothing, even though it takes more fabric and more energy to make plus size clothes. So the cost of your clothing is being subsidized by smaller people. Privilege. Or that your heating bills are lower. If you have more fat on your body, you'll probably stay warmer in the winter, which means lower heating bills. Fat privilege. And she said that not being judged for the food you're eating is thin privilege, but what about all the thin people that get shamed for eating too little at Christmas dinner every year? Is that not thin oppression? Now to be clear, I don't think any of those things are privileges, just like I don't think any of the things listed in the video were privileges, but if you're going to consider buying clothes at Target and eating a burger without judgment to be a privilege, then there are a lot of ways in which being fat is also a privilege, which just goes to show that thin privilege isn't real. And if you want to know more about my opinions on that, I have an entire video where I break down in detail why thin privilege isn't real. I'll link it above and you can go watch it. But yeah, none of the points in this video were actual privileges. Why? Why should I become? I have a right to be upset! So if you didn't read the TikTok, it says... When there is literally less than a 1% chance a person of my size will ever be thin, but everyone thinks fat people just don't try hard enough. So she's saying that effort doesn't matter when trying to lose weight because less than 1% of fat people will ever become thin. But weight loss isn't impossible, and there haven't been any comprehensive studies done on the likelihood of achieving intentional weight loss done in the past 20 years. So this less than 1% number makes me very suspicious. So I went digging in the comment section to see if there was any citation for where this number came from. And y'all, this creator, Maddie, came out swinging in the comments to defend this statistic while spreading a whole bunch of other misinformation in the process. So let's go on a hunt for this 1% statistic because a bunch of other people that saw this video also did. I found no less than 10 comments where people asked where this number was from, and Maddie's response was always some variation of, Google it. Someone asked, but why? I don't get why it's so low. Her response, give her a Google. 
There are plenty of resources out there. Give it a Google. Where did you get this percentage from? Quick Google. Literally, where did you get this statistic? Pretty easy to find with a quick Google. Fun tip. When I don't trust the fact, I love to do my own research. It's a good life skill. 1% is pure misinformation. Google it. This is TikTok, babe, not a news site. Google it yourself. I guess I should make a video on this since none of you have any interest in typing into Google. And some people were so kind in how they asked and were completely giving her the benefit of the doubt. And this was her response. Someone asked, can we get a source for that statistic? I believe it, but I'm curious where it came from. She responded, I'll probably make a video eventually, but it's a quick Google. Someone replied, what exactly do I search to prove that less than 1% of people your size or larger can become slimmer? Maddie replies, well, clearly you didn't look because it's very easy to find. The person replied, no, I didn't look, as I'd like to know what I should search to prove your point. I'm not hating, I genuinely like to view your sources. And she gave no response. Someone asked, source? Maddie replied, give her a Google. And the person replied, Google what exactly? So I'm clearly not the only person that really wanted a source for this claim. But Maddie goes on to say, if you take this video as me telling people to give up, you need better comprehension skills. I'm asking you to stop assuming we're lazy. It's wrong. Why are you blocking people and deleting their comments even if they're being respectful? Maddie says, I don't delete respectful comments. The reply says, yes, you do. I have screenshots of my friend commenting. You blocked him and deleted all his comments even though he wasn't being rude. If I blocked him, he was being rude. It's not something you get to have an opinion on, honestly. No, he wasn't. He explained how you misinterpreted the statistic, then asked for a source and you blocked him. Maddie replies, I don't need to argue with people who have decided that my body is their opinion. I didn't misinterpret the statistic and I've said, Google it. If you and your friend don't want to learn and you want to get all up in arms about me deleting comments, truly have fun. But realistically, you could just move on with your day or read other comments in which I've shared sources. My question is why you're taking screenshots. Why are you so up in arms about a stranger's video? Move on with your day. The person replies, what? What does my body is their opinion even mean? And now you're just changing the argument. My point is very simple. Don't try to change people's minds. Then when they try to have a respectful discussion, you block them. Maddie replies, if I blocked him, it wasn't respectful. You can tell by these comments. I clearly have no problem with having a discussion. A different person replies, why are you lying? I've seen you delete plenty of respectful comments. You deleted a comment asking for a source. How is that disrespectful? Probably asked in a rude way. Don't remember. I've given sources in the comments and it's easy to Google. TikTok doesn't require a bibliography. The person replies, why are you being difficult on purpose? This is not how you convince people of your views. Maddie replies, I'm being difficult? That's hilarious. Maybe the person I replied to deleted their comment. I don't know. I researched and listened to a bunch of studies. I'm not going to do that for every commenter. Just fucking Google it. There was a study in London from what I remember and one on Healthline, I believe, but you have the skills to use the internet. I believe in you. The person replied, just make a comment with your sources and pin it. If someone asks for a fact, when they ask where you learned it from, don't just say Google is free because that's rude and just plain weird. If I told you black mambas have extremely deadly venom, then you ask me where I found out and I tell you Google is free, are you going to be annoyed? Or are you going to say, oh yeah, you're right, my bad for being lazy and asking someone to cite their sources. I should just find the sources myself because I can totally tell which source they learned it from. And Maddie replies, the irony of calling a fat person lazy and then being too lazy to Google is not lost on me. This person didn't call her lazy. They made a sarcastic reference about themselves being lazy, but she saw the word lazy and that was it. It was directed towards her. So yeah, people were trying really hard to find where the source of this 1% claim came from and she would not provide it. She just told people to Google it and that they were lazy for not finding it themselves. But aside from that, Maddie also replied to a lot of comments with more misinformation when it comes to the health risks of obesity and how people become obese. One commenter said, wait, I genuinely don't understand what this means. Like, why can't people do it? Maddie replies, genetic cases aren't that rare. Not sure who told you that. Someone replies, genetic cases that prevent you from losing weight are not common at all. There are very few that do that. Maddie replies, untrue babe. Another commenter says, genetics don't defy thermodynamics. Maddie says, and you think 99% of people are just lazy? Someone else says, I think 99% of people aren't in a caloric deficit for a significant period of time. Yes, all of these commenters are right. Genetic cases that cause people to become obese, and especially morbidly obese, are very rare, and most people are obese because they overeat. 
But she also makes some really broad generalizations in some of these comments. Someone said, you don't destroy your metabolism with dieting, you destroy it by incorrectly dieting. And Maddie said, yeah, we all incorrectly dieted growing up. That's the point. Who's we? All fat people? If we're saying incorrect dieting means fad diets, that's not true. Not all fat people grew up going on fad diets. That might be your experience and some other people's experiences, but it's not everybody's experience. And she said in another comment, having an eating disorder destroys your metabolism. The idea that fat people just eat a lot is ridiculous. This isn't true. I have no doubt that an ED can ruin your metabolism, but not to the point where you are obese or morbidly obese without consuming excess calories. Nobody's eating 1500 calories a day and is morbidly obese just because their metabolism was ruined. Another commenter said, it's like, seriously, it took time to get to this size. It takes time to get it off. Also, not to forget the mental health issues we also have to combat. So at least this commenter acknowledges that the weight can come off with time. But Maddie replies, even if we had no other health issues, which to be honest, every fat person has other health issues, fat shaming and stigma cause weight gain. Like, stop. So every other fat person has health issues? Are you saying those health issues are caused by being fat? Or are you saying being fat is caused by those other issues? But aside from those claims, Maddie waffles back and forth in the comments over what the purpose of this TikTok was. Because a lot of people are saying that the statistic is wrong and she's using it to try to discourage people from attempting weight loss, which is how I would interpret it. But someone commented, just because only less than 1% manage to lose weight doesn't mean it's impossible and doesn't mean they shouldn't try. Nothing worth having comes easy. And Maddie said, don't know where I said we shouldn't try. Another person said, people don't like to hear this because it means that their own weight loss efforts are mostly futile. They get defensive. And Maddie replies, true man. In another comment, she says, the less than 1% are very loud about their success and we as a society cling to it. The statistic I posted is fact. It's not based on what you saw. And someone replied, you are trying to advocate that that sort of weight loss is near impossible, which could discourage some people out there from trying. And Maddie says, it is near impossible. I'm allowed to talk about facts. Another comment says, weight loss is hard, but not impossible like this girl is making it out to be. And Maddie replies, don't see the word impossible anywhere in the video. But in another comment, she says, just because something is quote, possible, doesn't mean it's something we should kill ourselves over. So she goes back and forth between saying, I didn't say it's impossible, but also agreeing that it's mostly futile, nearly impossible, and putting the word possible in quotes as if to say that it's not possible. So her reasoning for making this TikTok isn't to convince other people not to attempt weight loss, but she's just giving out a statistic that shows that weight loss is impossible. She's not saying that weight loss is impossible. The statistic is saying that weight loss is impossible, but weight loss is possible. There's no modern scientific evidence that shows that there is a 1%, 5%, 10% chance of being able to achieve intentional weight loss. So while she says the reason for making this TikTok was to just share a factual statistic that happens to support the idea that intentional weight loss is nearly impossible, her actual reason for making this is the other way around. She believes that intentional weight loss is impossible, so she made up this 1% number to try to convince other people that intentional weight loss is impossible. And you can tell this is true by how hard she's fighting in the comments to not have to reveal the source of where she got this 1% number. If all this TikTok was meant to do was to share a fact, then it shouldn't be this hard to share the source of that fact. Because remember, we're still on the hunt for the source of this 1% number. But the full version of that last comment said, just because something is quote possible, doesn't mean it's something we should all kill ourselves over. And we do, fat people are made to feel inhuman. And a reply says, interesting choice of words, considering unhealthy weight leads to more disease and generally premature death. Maddie says, that's actually blown way out of proportion. I recommend the podcast maintenance phase if you want to learn more about that. And if you don't know anything about maintenance phase, it is ground zero for the spread of misinformation when it comes to obesity and weight loss, particularly in the fat acceptance community. So it is no surprise that she tries to cite a podcast where the hosts have no medical experience as a citation for why obesity is not as unhealthy as people think it is.
But that person replies, it's not. It's really not. If you spent one shift in a hospital or any medical theory, you'd know it's not blown out of proportion, but go off. Maddie says, I work for doctors and was raised by them, babe, but you clearly don't want to do more research, just want to talk about things you don't understand. I have a suggestion. If you were raised by doctors and you work with doctors, why not have one of them come on your channel and make a video about how fake the obesity crisis is and how overblown all the health effects of obesity are and how weight loss is nearly impossible and shouldn't be attempted? Why not do that? It would give a lot more validity to your ideas than citing a podcast made by people that are not medical professionals. And let's also point out that the do your own research thing is textbook science denialism behavior. Do your own research is like the battle cry of science deniers everywhere. When they are losing, when they are trying to convince someone else of their nonsensical views, the move they'll pull on their last breath is, you don't know what you're talking about. Do your own research. Think for yourself. Another one of Maddie's comments says, there has never been a single day in my life I haven't actively worked on my body or mental health. How many thin people can say the same? A lot of thin people can say that. Are you saying that most thin people don't take care of themselves? And she said in other comments that the point of this post was to say that fat people aren't lazy, but you have no issue essentially turning that around on thin people and calling them lazy or neglectful or whatever other descriptor you're trying to say that fat people are not. That seems a little backwards. Another comment says, if you stop eating food, I guarantee there is a 100% chance you'll become thin. Maddie says, no, I will die. The response says, yes, after you lose all your body fat. I mean, they're both technically right. Another comment says, you can't really put a statistic on that because it depends solely on the person's willingness to stop their addiction and unhealthy habit. I didn't make up the statistic. I didn't say that you did. Now I'm a little conflicted whether you did. Yeah, see, this person knows what's up. And mind you, we're scrolling through all these comments, searching for where she said that she put the source for this 1% claim. We still haven't found it yet. Another comment says, okay, but nobody gets that big for no reason. And health issues only account for a small percentage of obese people. Many of them do this to themselves. Maddie said, you're making that up. I've never met an obese person who didn't have another health condition causing it. Okay, so in that last comment where she said that all fat people have other health conditions, she was saying that they all have health conditions that cause them to become fat. What are these health conditions that all fat people have that cause them to be fat? Not that are caused by being fat, but directly cause them to be fat. This is not true. There's no evidence that mostly underlying health conditions cause people to become obese. What health condition only started becoming common in the past 30 years as the obesity epidemic has taken off? But someone replies to that comment, then how come we never had so many obese people as we do now? Obesity rates have tripled in the past few decades. Maddie replies, it's interesting that you bring up that point. Do you truly think in the past few decades we have just gotten lazier? It's clear there's another reason. No, but they for sure are eating more junk than they should be, and now the media enables this, calling it body positivity. This person also knows what's up. This next comment says, I'm sorry, but how? Maddie says, a quick Google, tons of studies. The person replies, any keywords? Maddie says, there's an article by Healthline, one by NCBI, one from King's College London on the website Science Alert, and more. The hunt is finally over. We found the sources. Okay, so she said there's a Healthline article. That's way too vague to point to any specific article. There's literally thousands of Healthline articles and a bunch of them on weight loss. So I can't know which one she's talking about. The one from NCBI, NCBI has a lot of studies. It's kind of just a database of studies. So I looked it up and I typed in NBCI weight loss and I got all of these results, just a ton of results. And I have no clue which one she's referring to. I even clicked on a few of them and I didn't see anything about 1%, but I'm also not going to read through all of them just to guess which one she's talking about. And I even Google searched it with the 1% term 
and I still got all these results. And the top source was from 2004 and didn't mention anything about less than 1%. And this goes to show why people were asking for specific studies when they asked Maddie for her sources, because this is what happens when you tell people to just Google something, especially something as vague as weight loss. You get a bunch of results, and I guess she wanted her viewers to go through all of these studies to find the one that supports her 1% statistic, which sounds very tedious, especially considering she claims to already have the source in her possession and is just refusing to provide it. But the third source from King's College, I actually did find. And I think this was what she was referring to in the earlier comment when she said that there was a study from London. But the main thing to note about this study is that it was not an intentional weight loss study. It tracked people over a nine year period and kept track of who lost weight and who didn't. But it never tracked who in the study was trying to lose weight. In fact, it took out bariatric surgery patients from the data. So yes, according to this study, there is less than a 1% chance of getting to a healthy body weight if you are obese. But not all of the 99% of people who didn't succeed even tried. And she said multiple times in the comments that this is a fact and it proves that weight loss is nearly impossible. But the statistic was heavily misrepresented. But there's another comment here that says, this is kind of misleading. Those chances are not because it's hard, but because many people at that point don't even try. Not saying it's easy. And Maddie replies, studies have been done in control groups, which means they were trying actually. But there's only one study you've brought forward to support your statistic. And one, it didn't track if people were actually trying. And two, it didn't have control groups because it didn't track if people were trying. So both of these are untrue when it comes to her only source that backs up this 1% statistic. So I don't know if she didn't read the study or just misinterpreted it or expected nobody to actually go look at it. But that source does not support the idea that there is a 1% chance of achieving intentional weight loss. Overall, the entire comment section was a mess. There were so many false and weird claims made, like genetic disorders that cause obesity are very common, and that all fat people have underlying health conditions that cause them to be fat, and that thin people don't take care of their health. Not to mention the assertion that supposedly factual information that is stated on TikTok doesn't need to be cited because TikTok doesn't require a bibliography and Google is free. Which only opens the door for people to spread as much misinformation as they possibly can and say literally anything on TikTok with no scientific evidence or citations needed. I could make a whole TikTok account about bringing awareness to the magical and healing effects of eating styrofoam. And you can't ask me for proof. Google is free. Oh, you can't find any sources? Well, you're not looking hard enough. But this comment section as a whole exemplifies the behavior of any science denialism group. Instead of providing sources for their often outlandish claims, they either tell people to do their own research to educate themselves, or provide a resource to a non-credible Facebook source, or in this case, a non-credible podcast. If it takes this much work to find a source for someone's claim, then don't believe the claim. She went comment by comment, telling people to Google the source of her claim themselves, instead of writing and pinning a comment saying, hey, here are my sources, since so many people have asked. That would have taken significantly less time, but instead she buried the one and a half sources she had at the bottom of her comment section and then got angry at people for refusing to go through the tedious work I did in order to find them. And it's all because she knows her claim is wrong, but we're going to watch one more TikTok by this creator. So I got a comment on one of my posts the other day that said, lose weight, it's not rocket science. And you know what? You are so right. It's not rocket science. I wish it were rocket science. Rocket science makes sense. Rocket science is based in definitive answers. It's based in math. Nutrition and weight loss is not that. There's a reason the diet industry is completely capitalistic. It's because everybody's looking for an answer. 
Everybody's looking for the right way. And sadly, the truth is there is no answer. It's not as simple as a calorie deficit, going to the gym, just not eating cake or eating salad. Each person's weight loss journey is personal to them and only makes sense for their body. Each body is different. There are hundreds of factors that affect weight loss. So before you go commenting, because it was so easy for you, or because you think it should be easy, remember, it's not rocket science. So she mentioned that the diet industry is capitalistic and looking for an answer when it comes to weight loss. First of all, not all diets are created by the diet industry. You can make long-term healthy changes to your diet, which is what a good diet is, and also not support the diet industry. For example, if you switch from eating chips or cookies as a snack to eating fruit, or switching your liquid calories like soda to water, neither of these changes support the diet industry, but you are still changing your diet in a healthy way. And second, the diet industry isn't looking for answers. It's looking to sell you something, which is why if you look for a long-term weight loss solution from the diet industry, you'll probably be disappointed and probably why you've tried fad diet after fad diet and it hasn't worked. And she's making a stance that the diet industry is bad in this video, but from this TikTok and the last TikTok, it's clear that she has internalized a lot of the negative messaging from the diet industry. She said that the diet industry exists for weight loss. That isn't true. The diet industry is there to make money, but she fell for the marketing. In the previous comment section, she kept saying over and over again how she's not lazy for not being able to lose weight, even though nobody called her lazy. But again, the you're lazy if you remain fat is diet industry marketing. And she talks about how the science of weight loss is constantly changing. That's not really true. The science behind individual weight loss is pretty consistent year to year. The science always says to reduce your calorie intake. But new fad diets come out every year that claim to be science-based, and that's what she's referring to in this video as science, even though that's just more marketing by the diet industry to try to get people to buy products, not to actually get people to lose weight and keep it off long term. This is like how there's a new get-rich-quick scheme that takes off on social media every year that promises wealth, like NFTs or some fancy course, when in reality... The thing that's going to make most people financially stable is the tried and true way of simply saving money and not throwing it away on shady scams. And similarly, the way most people are going to achieve weight loss is the tried and true method of consistently eating less calories. It's not trendy or new, but it is the most effective way. So while a lot of what she says makes it seem like she's past believing anything that the diet industry says, a lot of her beliefs make it seem like she's still very much in the pocket of the diet industry. But in the comments of this video, someone said, I was overweight for years and dealt with it by taking responsibility for my situation, starting with a better diet and workouts. No excuses. Maddie says, so glad the science worked for you. I'm not making excuses. I'm saying people need to stop with the idiotic suggestions. Dietary changes are most of the issue when it comes to losing weight. Suggesting a better diet and exercise is not an idiotic suggestion. And in a comment from the last video, there was this exchange. Someone said, statistics can be misrepresented. Does that statistic mean that less than 1% of people who tried lose the weight? And Maddie says, we've all tried. The reply says, who's all? And how long? My weight loss journey took about three months to show any signs of improvement. Maddie says, I've been trying for 15 years and every fat person I've ever met has similar stories. The commenter replies, you mean on and off. You can't tell me you're consistently eating less than 2,000 calories for 15 years. Maddie replies, I won't discuss calories with you. I have an eating disorder, but you don't care about triggering people. You're just fat phobic. First of all, this person didn't maliciously try to trigger you by mentioning calories. They were just asking a question. And they also weren't being fat phobic. And if you make videos about weight loss, which is what this TikTok was, you have to know that someone is going to mention calories in the comments. So if it is this triggering for you to see the word calories, then don't make videos about weight loss. And second, I'm going to interpret the brash response Maddie gave to someone asking if she's stuck to a calorie deficit long term 
to mean that she hasn't stuck to a calorie deficit long term. So how are you going to make a video saying suggestions to eat less is idiotic and that it doesn't work for weight loss when you haven't done it? Even if you have an ED or you just don't want to eat less, you can't say that I've spent years following the science and it hasn't worked, but you haven't stuck to the most basic science that is consistent year after year and is the first thing that will come up when you search how to lose weight, which is eat in a calorie deficit. So yes, weight loss isn't rocket science. It's far simpler than that, even if you don't want to recognize it. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. I've seen enough misinformation and generally horrible claims for the next week. So I hope you enjoyed the ride. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you in my next one.